Hello, my friends. One of the most important things you can ever do is help people to understand the business value from technology. I'm going to give you three quick tips on how to do that. So let's hop in. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn with Microsoft. Welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I want to talk today uh, for you user enablement specialists, adoption specialists, or maybe you're a director of collaboration technology somewhere. We want to talk about business value. One of the things we hear from people so frequently is that they don't understand uh, what is the direct business value they're going to get from a technology implementation like Copilot? All AI implementations have to have some connection to the business objectives that you're really trying to drive in your organization. And this was the inspiration for the interactive scenario library that we provided. Now, there's a couple things I want to call out before I hop into a demo of the scenario library. Number one, business objectives are best done at a departmental or divisional level. Obviously, an organization wants to reduce costs, increase revenue, and have a healthy brand. Those things are pretty straightforward. But the actual how, where the rubber meets the road, is where you think about it in terms of the individual departments uh, and how they execute on their particular mission. Now, maybe you're a smaller organization. Maybe you only have, I don't know, 25 or maybe 100 people in your organization. This stuff still applies to you. You have a marketing department, you have a sales department, you have a customer service department. Even if all of that is just a few people in your organization, an AI can definitely help you become more efficient and execute on the mission that you have in those areas more effectively. Now, the other thing that you should think about is that, you know, people really need to understand at almost an emotional, visceral level, what technology is going to do for them. What's in it for them is a question that is often poorly communicated in adoption plans and user enablement plans and in technology implementations, especially when you're talking to stakeholders or just your average everyday business user. People really need to understand what's in it for them. How are you specifically going to make their lives better? The devil is in the details, but this is where words like, we're going to transform your experience are great for a top line conversation, but people always want to know how, how are you going to transform my experience? So be ready with details and examples. Third, not everyone has to agree on what the top priority actually is. Having a great reputation as a business to me seems like that would be number one for a lot of places, but that's not necessarily the case. What if you're a nonprofit? Then serving your community, serving your constituents or the people that you were um, you know, created to serve is actually your top priority. So it is business specific to a certain extent but you don't have to agree. What's important is, is that people feel served by the work that you were doing. They need to feel an impact from the work that you were doing, and they at least need to know that you're in it with them, right? That you were there as well, having that personal experience of that technology. Whenever I do presentations, I try to throw in some of my own personal experience, and I don't do that just to be colloquial or because it's a, a, a cute public speaking thing. I do it so that people can understand that I'm not any different than them. I've had my aha moment with Copilot. It helps me daily with my inbox and with being able to write documents and do other types of analysis and deal with that blank page syndrome that I sometimes have when trying to write a blog post. There are things that I do with Copilot where it's relevant to my actual experience. That's what people need to find. Now, I'm talking about AI and Copilot because it is the subject of the day, but all of this applies to using Microsoft Teams, using SharePoint, sharing files in OneDrive. Right? Don't forget about those foundational services because what you may need to do if your organization isn't ready to invest in AI is you may just really need to focus on the fundamentals, and that is perfectly okay and actually a wonderful thing to work on. Are people saving documents where you want them to be saved? Are they saving them in SharePoint in the right area? Because that's going to have an impact on how effective Copilot is going to be when you do finally join us uh, on that AI journey. So for now, let's hop into the scenario library. And I'm going to do a quick demo for you so you can understand exactly what the scenario library can do for you and the conversations it can drive. So let's take a look. 
Okay, here we are on the Microsoft Copilot Scenario Library. Now remember, as I mentioned, these scenarios are going to discuss AI implementations, but there's also advantages to be gained from a variety of collaboration technologies in these scenarios. As you come here and take a look, I'm gonna scroll down and give you a view of the different types of departments that we have built in. You can see here that we refer to them as functional scenarios. So that's functions of a business or a department in normal, regular terms. <laughs> and so customer service, finance, human resources, information technology, et cetera. So let's take a hop in here on the left navigation. So here you can see that what we've done is We've identified a variety of scenarios that are very common in operating this function. Candidate search, improving onboarding, uh, making sure that you improve organizational health metrics, resolving employee issues. And if you click on any one of these, you're going to hop right into the scenario page. Now, right at the top is the scenario guide. I love this scenario guides. Uh, because you can always just download this information and also alter it in your own organization. If you take a look here, you can see that each one of the steps of executing this scenario is detailed on this handy PowerPoint slide. And again, maybe in your organization, you don't start with business chat. You start with going to a particular data portal that you have. Uh, you can still analyze that data using Copilot in Excel, develop an action plan in Word, communicate with Copilot in Outlook, and meet with stakeholders and teams using Copilot along the way. But just in case you were not not using all of Microsoft 365 for this scenario, it also shows you the core and foundational applications that will help you along your journey. Now, the other thing I love about this is it shows you the actual KPIs. So KPIs are important because that's how you measure the effectiveness. Now, maybe you're not measuring a KPI now, uh, and what you're just doing is talking to people in your organization because you're a smaller business. That's okay. But certainly you're aware of what your employee turnover rate is, right? And you can understand that if you reduce the turnover rate of your employees, you're going to save money and improve your employee experience. Now, there's more discussion here, and it also also lays out right here uh, in each scenario what you'll find on that PowerPoint slide as well. Now, you can take a look at these for any of the various areas that you happen to work in. So maybe you're not in charge of AI across your entire company, uh, but you happen to work in marketing and you want to understand the different ways that AI could help you in the marketing area. There's an entire marketing scenario kit which has all of the scenarios in it. Uh, you can watch an overview or watch a handy demo. Let's check out one of those now. I'm a marketing manager at Northwind Traders, and I missed an important launch meeting on Project Redwood, which is the code name for our new high-end camping product. I'm going to show you how I use Teams with Copilot to get caught up on what I missed. Here we've got a meeting recap, and on the right-hand side, I asked Copilot, were there any big decisions? And yes, there were two big decisions. The launch date for Project Redwood was delayed by two weeks to allow for more time for product testing and certification. That's a pretty big deal. So was it an easy decision to delay the project? No, it was not an easy decision, and there was disagreement among the team. They had to compromise on a two-week delay instead of a month to keep the press event as scheduled. Now, if you received all this information in a meeting summary or meeting minutes, you might not get the deeper context. Next, I asked, list the pros and cons of the decision to delay in a table. The response even includes citations for who made the comments, so you can see Marlene's detailed comments favoring the delay, and conversely, here's a reason from Daniel opposing the delay. As you can see, Copilot in Teams lets me catch up on meetings that I've missed in just minutes, saving me from needing to attend every meeting. I'm now ready to go on to the next step, which is using Copilot for Microsoft 365, an experience that is a little bit like having a digital chief of staff that has access to your entire work environment, including your emails, chats, and files you work on. I get over 200 emails per day, and I need to know the latest on Project Redwood. So instead of going through my emails, I'm going to ask it to summarize key emails from the past few days relating to the project, organizing the updates in a table with a column for topic, update, and the action where I am mentioned, 
including any deadlines they've provided. Now, Copilot is organizing the table, and immediately I see a customer opportunity with Fabricam, and the action is to confirm availability for a video call with them. Each of these have references if needed for a quick deep dive. My next question was to generate a recap of the launch meeting on Project Redwood, to include a list of attendees, key decisions, and any open action items, and to list important details in bold. Here's a key decision. The launch of Project Redwood will be delayed by two weeks due to product testing issues. Notice I did not need to point to the specific meeting. I just described it, and Copilot generated a detailed summary and provided a direct link to the meeting recap. I then asked Copilot to draft an email to my leadership team based on the two earlier responses. Interacting with Copilot like this becomes very conversational, allowing you to easily combine multiple responses. Now, one of the actions I had earlier was to create the pitch deck for Project Redwood. I'll jump over to Word to show you the specs that were created for this product. Here I see an action item to add a high-level product positioning statement. I can use Copilot to ask it to generate a 50-word elevator pitch for this product, including a catchy tagline at the top. Now, while this is generating, it's using the context of the Word document to create a first draft. And as you can see here, it has the ultimate family tent as a tagline and a value proposition below it. Here I can continue to fine tune the draft, but I wanna show you on the right hand side how to interact with the document in a different way. Here I asked it to explain the benefits of a proprietary branded technology. And within moments, it gave me a specific answer based on the content in the document, saving me from needing to dive in deeper. My next step is to create a product pitch deck. I'm going to start by asking Copilot to create a presentation from a file, specifically the Word document I was working on. Within moments, it has analyzed the source and starts generating logical titles and sections. It also pulls relevant images from the Word document or from my corporate branded image library to include in the first draft. Within moments, I have a presentation that is 80% complete, including an agenda, introduction, and my value proposition. It didn't get everything right. For example, this table didn't form itself perfectly, which I need to fix. But each of the slides comes with speaker notes to help me know how it generated the slide and the key messages I need to get across. Now that just gives you a very quick overview of how I use Copilot in Microsoft 365 to stay on top of my work as a marketing manager. So that gives you some concrete information about how Copilot can help you. Uh, and by the way, how Copilot can help you in your meetings in general, uh, in the context of this particular department, right? You can also take a look at the table of the KPIs that I mentioned here, the key processes before and after states, as well as the different roles. And I love this part, day in the life of a marketing manager, uh, with Copilot. Let's take a look at this real quick. These are so helpful, right? This is what it, what Dave has to do in his day. He missed some meetings. He's going to use Copilot in Teams. He received more than 200 emails a day, so he asked Copilot to summarize them. I love that one. I do that all the time. Uh, and other types of steps that exist. So, you know, definitely explore this. And what I like to do is actually pull this up with my stakeholders uh, and have a conversation about what they want to get out of AI implementations or uh, technology in general. Having conversations about the business value of technology is a foundational skill for being an adoption specialist or really being that leader in an organization that's connecting your technology implementation to the business objectives of your organization. Use the scenario library or something like it to have these conversations with your stakeholder. Make sure that you are directionally aligned on what you're trying to get from your technology implementation and conduct regular check-ins with your stakeholders to make sure that they're feeling the value, that they're getting what's in it for them. Those tips will help make sure that your technology implementations do what they're designed to do, which is actually improve our business operations and help us with our careers. Give me a shout out in the comments below if you use the scenario library and let me know if there's any other features you'd like to see built into it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.